Welcome to Fireside Fridays. Some of my wise friends have suggested that it might be good for us on Friday to have uh, maybe some stories, some illustrations from life, and maybe some comments on current events. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the Galatian believers, said, Let us not be weary in doing well, for in due season we shall reap if we don't faint. And the scripture also says, in a strange turn of phrase to the modern ear, cast your bread upon the waters and after many days it will return. But the idea we get that the sower needs to be patient and eventually the seed springs forth into a harvest. Uh, some years ago, quite a few years ago now, I was visiting in Omaha, Nebraska and I had dinner in the home of a couple. The man's name was Hoffman. And uh, I remember a delicious Wiener Schnitzel and uh, apple strudel for dessert. And as we were talking, I asked him, how did the gospel come to his family? And he told me that his grandfather had been a godly farmer in Germany. And uh, Mr. Hoffman's father had worked on the family farm with his dad and he was not saved. He was full grown and as they were headed home one evening for supper, the old father quoted a gospel scripture to his son and said, we're very concerned about you, son. You, you haven't trusted the Lord yet and you're getting on in years. And this rage just boiled up inside that man and he reached down and he picked up a stone and he threw it right through the plate glass window. And he stormed into his bedroom, he packed his kit bag, and he, without hardly a word, he left the farmstead. He traveled to America, and hearing there was a large company of Germans in the Chicagoland area, he moved to the city of Chicago, and he got a job with many other Germans at that time in the meatpacking plant. Well, it wasn't many days until he was very homesick and very sorry for his uh, rash action. But as he was walking home one evening, he noticed a man standing on the curbside with a little a squeeze box, and he was playing German hymns. And for all the world, he could close his eyes and imagine himself back in the parlor in Germany with his mother playing the pump organ as his parents sang those old hymns and he was just overwhelmed with homesickness and he stood there listening to the man as he sang those hymns of the church. But as soon as the man laid down his instrument and picked up his Bible to begin preaching, the young man hot-footed at home. Well, this happened day after day as the man was standing witnessing in German to all of these German workers coming out of the meat packing plant. And so one day, as this young Hoffman was standing there, uh, the, the evangelist, instead of uh, stopping his playing, he continued to play a tune on the instrument and said, now, before my next song, I'd like to quote a verse of scripture to you. And he quoted the very verse that Hoffman's father had quoted to him the day he threw the rock through the plate glass window. And realizing at that moment, it wasn't his father who was chasing him. It was God who was chasing him. And God was in Chicago too. He couldn't outrun God. Mr. Hoffman fell on his knees right on the street in Chicago and cried out to God to save him. Well, he didn't want to just write a letter home to tell his father he'd been saved. He saved up his money and it took him quite a few months until he had enough to buy his passage back to Germany and he arrived at the farm to tell his family that God had saved him in Chicago. And Mr. Hoffman said to me, there wasn't a lot of room in my grandfather's little farmhouse, but in the dining room there was a large uh, china cabinet that was sort of on an angle in the corner. And old Mr. Hoffman, the father, pulled it out from the wall, went in behind, pulled it in on himself, and he said he spent two days on his knees in this little private spot, 
thanking God for saving his boy. Eventually, uh, Hoffman Jr. returned to Chicago and himself became an evangelist among the German population in North America. But just a little word of encouragement, those of you perhaps have wayward children or grandchildren and you think they're far from God, they may be far from you, but God is as close as a prayer. As Paul would say, preaching at Mars Hill, he is not far from every one of us. And so we would join you in prayer that God would bring home the prodigals, that he would reach them where they are, and to pray for those who are God's people in the very place where your children and grandchildren are, that God would give them wisdom and courage and boldness and just the right word that will uh, reach their hearts and convict them and bring them to the foot of the cross. So be encouraged. God is at work. He loves families. He likes to save whole families. Families were his idea. Don't think that he's forgotten those wayward children. And may we see the day when the phone rings or when someone shows up at the door to tell us that if we do not give up, if we do not faint, we will reap. We will not grow weary in well-doing, but wait on God and anticipate the moment when the seed that has been sown will germinate into everlasting life. Well, I hope you were blessed uh, with this video and uh, thanks for watching. If you find something helpful, be sure to like, comment, or share. And the Lord bless you real good. Thanks.